candidates often find uh, the valuation of derivatives uh, to be one of the most challenging things they do uh, throughout their uh, CFA um, years, especially at level two. Uh, if you're trying to follow the readings at level two and the books at level two, I think they went out of their way to write them in such a way that nobody could possibly understand them. All that senseless, useless notation. And it comes down to something we did in level one. Derivatives are really just a time value of money problem. So if we can conceive of a derivatives question as nothing more than money on a timeline and we just want to compare dollars at the same point in time, that's what derivatives are. So I'm going to prove it to you uh, with a simple example and a difficult example uh, and a, a rather challenging example that gives a lot of students uh, problems at level two. And uh, even if you're not at level two or haven't seen derivatives, I'm going to show you how absolutely simple it is that if you didn't know anything about derivatives or the formulas, and you just knew time value of money, you could solve any question in derivatives no matter what it is. So let's have a look at this. Let's say that we observe uh, an underlying, uh, some asset currently priced at $45, and we want to determine uh, uh, what the forward price would be six months from now, that if we wanted to enter into a contract to buy this six months from now, what would be the no arbitrage price of the forward contract? Um, the current risk-free rate that we'll use is 2.25% and we'll uh, do this very simply. We won't use continuous compounding. We'll just use uh, uh, um, basic compounding here. So what we want to do is determine what the price would be at that point in time. Well, all we have to do is just move this $45 forward in time six months. So we're going to take the underlying price, which is S0, and we're going to multiply by 1 plus R to the power of T because that's where we want to go. T. By the way, in me just writing that out, I have just given you the uh, formula for uh, the forward price of any underlying that doesn't have any income attached to it. So it is just going to be $45, and we know that we're just bringing it forward uh, at a rate of 2.25% uh, uh, for six months, six, out of, six over 12, or to the power of 0.5. And we will get 45.503. And that's money at this point in time. So this $45 is at this point in time. This 45503 is at this point in time. Great. Nice and simple. This is where it uh, kind of gets a little bit tricky for candidates is when we say three months later, the underlying price is at $48. What is the value of that forward contract? Had you entered this forward contract and agreed to buy the underlying in six months for 45.503, whatever the price of the underlying was at that time, all you're going to pay is 45,503. Three months later, it's selling for 48. What is the value of that contract? And this is where candidates um, start to get uh, a little concerned that uh, they read the questions. OK, well, where do I start? Where do I begin? Well, this is just a timeline. Just think about it as, as where are the dollars on this timeline? Well, we're here with 48. We know that the dollar value over here is 45.503. Well, we can't compare dollar values at different points in time. We must do one thing. We must bring 48 forward and compare these two prices, or we must bring 45 back and compare these two prices. And we're going to do it both ways, and I'm going to show you that no matter which way you go, you're going to get the same answer. And then on the next screen, what I'm going to do to show you how, how uh, absolutely easy this is to play with is rather than compare it here, we're going to bring both these amounts all the way back to here, then bring them forward up to here and show you that we get the same thing. In fact, you could value this at any point on the timeline that you want. So let's bring the $48 forward and we'll call this FT. We'll be calculating this was F0. Uh, we're, we'll say that this is time. Uh, little t. So we're calculating what a futures price would be three months from now. So we know that we're going to take the underlying 48 and carry it, okay, 0, 2, 2, 5. but this time only for three months. So it's the power of 0.25. And our ft here is going to be 48.268. 48.268. So if we wanted the value at time t, uh, it is going to be just the difference of these two, 48,268 minus the 45,503. So it'll be ft minus f naught, and we will get 2.765. But again, we have to look at where we are on the timeline. This 2.765 is at this point in time. 
if we are being asked for the value at time t, in other words, what is the value here? Well, this money is at the wrong point in the timeline. We know that we have to bring it back. So we want to take this value and bring it back to here, which is going to be 2.765, and I'll use this as my uh, uh, numerator, denominator, demarcation point, divided by 1.0225, and we'll bring it back for three months to the power of 0.25, we will get 2.75. Look at that. So what we did is we brought this forward, we compared these two prices over here, we got a difference. But in comparing the prices over here and getting the difference, this difference belongs at this point in the timeline. We're at this point in the timeline, so if we're asked what the value is at this point, we have the value at this point, we know we have to bring money back on the timeline. Let's do it the other way. Uh, our F naught here was 45.503. Let's, uh, let's just say, okay, well, instead of bringing this money forward, calculating the difference and bring it back, let's just bring this back and calculate the difference. Will we get 275? We better get 275. So let's bring this back to this point in time. So it'll be 45.503. Discount it back by 1.0225 to the power of 0.25 because it's three months. And we will get 45.25. These two dollar values are at the same point on the timeline. So we can compare them. 48 minus 45.25 is 2.75. Since this 2.75 is at this point in time and that's the, where we want to be, we don't have to do anything with it. There we go. So it's really just a matter of moving money around on the timeline until you get it to the point you want and all dollar values are at the same point in the timeline so that you can compare them. Now let's get really, really uh, fancy here. What we're going to do is we're going to take the same problem but we're going to bring the 45503 all the way back to here. We're going to bring the 48 back to here, take the difference and then take this difference and move it forward. Let's see if we get 275. Okay. Um, before I do this example, I just want to stress, you would never uh, value uh, a forward contract by doing that. It would just be a, a complete waste of time. But I just want to show you that you can. We're not using any formulas for any valuation. We're not doing anything. All we're doing is we're using what we learned in the time value of money is to compare dollars at the same point in time. And it doesn't matter where we move them as long as we get them to the same point in time. So we had originally calculated uh, uh, the forward price at 45.503 by bringing $45 forward six months. So if we take this 45503 and bring it backwards six months, we should get to the same $45. And you could verify that by just taking 45503 and dividing it by 1.0225 to the 0.5. You'll get 45. Well, let's take this $48 and bring it back because you can't compare money at this point in time and this point in time. So let's bring the $48 uh, dollars back to this point in time. Let's see what we get. It'll be 48 divided by 1.0225, and this is only three months, so the 0.25, and we should get 47.734. 47.734 minus the 45 leaves uh, 2.734. But we want VT, we want it at this point in time. We have, we, we were able to bring the $2 values back to this point in time so we can compare them. There's the difference. Now we just gotta bring this forward to this point in time. So it'll be 2.734 multiplied by 1.0225 to the power of 0.25. And we should get, does this surprise you? 275. Uh, all without using any formulas whatsoever uh, from derivatives all by just looking at this and saying, I'm gonna pretend this is just a big time value of money problem. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a difficult um, question from level two uh, about a bond futures. And that's a little bit tricky because you have an underlying, you have a futures price on an underlying, and then you have a quoted futures price. And I'm gonna show you three different ways to solve that all without using any formulas or any notation whatsoever, all by just drawing a timeline and putting money on different points of the timeline and moving it around until I get them all at the same point in time. All right, here's our scenario, and I'll, uh, I'll describe what we have here. Uh, we're asked a question. We're given some information, and we're asked a question. The question that we're asked is, does an arbitrage opportunity exist? 
given this information on the futures contract, given this information on the underlying bond. And we have to determine, is there an arbitrage opportunity? To determine that, we have to compare dollars at the same point in the timeline. Uh, so let's go. We have a quoted futures price of $125. So I know that that is my futures price. Conversion factor is 0.9. I'll explain that shortly. Time remaining to contract expiration is three months. There's my timeline. I'll draw a straight line. I'll put two little ticks on there. Here we are at zero. Here we are at three months from now. And I'm told the price over there is 125. So I know that that 125 belongs way down there. Uh, accrued interest over the life of the futures contract is zero. So for the quoted futures price, I don't have to worry about any accrued interest. The quoted bond price is 112. Well, that's over here. That's the price today. That's the price of the bond. The underlying bond is 112. Accrued interest since the last coupon payment is 8 cents. Well, that's at this point in time as well, because if I bought the bond, I'd have to pay the clean price plus the accrued interest. So that's at that point in time. The accrued interest at futures contract expiration is 20 cents. That means way over here, uh, AI will be 20 cents. It's 8 cents here, it's 20 cents here, so I know that over the, over the uh, course of these next three months, this bond will add 12 cents per hundred of par value, 12 cents in accrued interest. So I know that when I sell the bond at this point in time, I'll get 20 cents back. It'll cost me 112.08 to buy it today. I gotta carry it to the end of the term. When I sell it, I get the 20 cents back. Good enough. And we're being asked, is there an arbitrage opportunity? Well, the one thing that we wanna do is compare the same dollars at the same point in time. So I know I'm gonna do one of two things. I'm either gonna take this 125 and I'm gonna bring it backwards over here, or I'm gonna take this amount of money and I'm gonna bring it forwards over here. Uh, and I can determine whether or not there's an arbitrage opportunity based on uh, the difference between those two prices. This is a bond futures contract. The underlying of any bond futures contract is a generic bond. This is a specific bond. So to convert the specific bond to the generic bond or to convert the generic to the specific, we need a conversion factor. The conversion factor is 0.9. Here's the relationship we do have to keep in mind. The quoted futures price is whatever the futures price on this specific bond is. When I bring this forward, this will give me F0. If I divide it by the conversion factor, I'll be able to compare it to the 125. Or if I take the 125 and I multiply by the conversion factor, I'll be able to compare it to whatever uh, value uh, I get in the future using this pricing down here. That's all I have to keep in mind. We have to compare the same types of dollars at the same point in time. So let's go. Um, we're going to solve this three ways. We're going to solve it by bringing this forward in time and converting this into a format uh, uh, of F0. We're going to multiply this by 0.9, compare those two numbers, determine if there's an arbitrage opportunity, and then we'll bring it back in time to determine what the arbitrage profit would be, because when there is an arbitrage opportunity, we don't wait till the future to take our earnings, we take it today. Uh, and then um, we're going to do it again by bringing this forward, but instead of uh, uh, converting this, we're going to convert this into something comparable to here, take the difference between the two, and then bring it back. That's a little bit tricky. And then we're going to do it a really super simple way, which is just to leave this money over here. Why bring it forward, compare it, and bring it back? We're going to leave it here. We're just going to bring this back and compare the two. We should get the same result all three times. So let's go. Let's buy the bond. It's going to cost us 112.08, right? It's the uh, all-in price, 112.08. Let's carry it to the end of the term. Risk-free rate is 0.3%, so that's 1.003. That's three months to the power of 0.25. But remember, we're going to get this 20 cents, so we can take 20 cents off of, of that futures price right away because we're going to get it. And the price we'll get over here is 111.96, 39.56. I'm going to try to preserve as many decimal places as I can. Uh, this is F0. This is QF0. Remember, I said we have to compare the same types of dollars at the same point in time. Well, we're at the same point in time, but we don't have the same types of dollars. QF0 is the price for a generic underlying. F0 is the price for a specific underlying. We've got to convert the specific underlying to a generic or convert the generic to a specific. We know the conversion factor is 0.9. We just have to keep this in mind. To change QF0 into an F0, we just multiply it by the conversion factor. So if we take 125 and we multiply it by 0.9, we will get 
112.50. This 112.50 is comparable to this 111.963956 right now. So if we take the difference between the two, 112.50 minus 111.9639, we will get 0 0.536044. So the question is asking, is there an arbitrage opportunity? Yes, there is. Because given this conversion factor, given this original situation, once we bring this forward in time, the quoted futures price, um, uh, sorry, the quoted futures price uh, uh, at 125 applied with the conversion factor gets us to 112.50. It should get us to 111.9639. It doesn't, so there is an arbitrage uh, profit opportunity. But where are we on the timeline? We're over here. This is the arbitrage profit at this point in time. Whenever there is arbitrage profit, we always take it at this point in time. So all we have to do is bring this amount back to this point in time. That is 0.536044. And we just bring it back 1.003, the risk-free rate for point to the power 0.25, and we'll get 0.5356. All right, there's one way to do it, and the way we did it here is by uh, changing the quoted futures price to a futures price to compare it to this futures price. And then we took our arbitrage profit at this point in time and brought it back to this point in time. Let's solve this a different way. All right, so here we are at this point in time. We're going to bring all everything at this point in time all the way back to here and just compare the two. All right, so we're gonna take the QFO and turn it into an FO. Remember, we have our AI over here, which is money sitting at this point in the timeline. So we've gotta bring the AI back and we've gotta bring uh, the QFO back. Uh, first, we're gonna convert it to an FO, then bring it back, add the two together and compare it to this one. So let's go, what do we have? We have 125, the conversion factor is 0.9 and we're gonna bring that back, 1.003 to the power of 0.25. Uh, but we also have this 20 cents that we got to bring back. So we'll take this 0.2. We'll also bring that back by 1.003 uh, to the 0.25. It's easy to see that we could have simply just added 20 cents to the numerator here and had the same result. In other words, this would have been 112.50. We could have added the 20 cents to get to 112.70 uh, and then brought it back. But uh, I just want to show you that we're bringing back uh, oh, you know, question. I get a lot is why are we adding the accrued interest to the quoted futures price? It's because it is at this point in time and we got to bring it back. I'm just doing it in two separate steps to show you uh, uh, that I'm bringing back all of the dollar values here to compare over here. So if I bring back the 125 times 0.9 uh, discounted back, I will get 112.41578. If I bring the 20 cents back to this point in time, I will get 0.19. 985. And uh, we know that the price of the bond today is 112.08. Is there an arbitrage opportunity? Well, to figure out if there's an arbitrage opportunity and how much it is, I take the 112.4158, I add the 19 point, uh, sorry, the 0.19985, and I subtract the 112.08, and I will get 0.5356. Same answer. I get the same answer. Look how simple that was. I didn't have to do anything to this. I didn't even have to know how to bring that into the future. I didn't have to know any of that. I just had to convert this to a futures price, realize that I have 112.50 over here, I have 20 cents over here, and I've got to bring both of these amounts back to this point in time to compare the same dollars at the same point in time. I get to the same answer. Let's solve it a different way. All right, the first time we solved it, we took this specific uh, money and we brought it forward. We converted this generic money to specific money compared to two specific amounts to find out what the arbitrage uh, opportunity was or if there was an arbitrage opportunity. The reason I'm referring it to a specific and generic, remember the underlying of this is a generic bond. This is a specific bond. So when we get a futures price here, that is a specific uh, futures price. This is a generic futures price. We can't compare generic and specific together. Our arbitrage opportunity must be specific and not generic. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to bring this forward, but instead of taking the generic price and making it specific, we'll take the specific price and make it generic, right? All right, let's go. 112.08, that's what it costs us to buy the bond, 1.003 to the power of 0.25, 
and of course we have 20 cents waiting for us at that end and we will get 111.9639963956 that is a specific futures price this is a generic futures price let's take the specific price and make it generic to do that we need a conversion factor we know our conversion factor is 0.9 and we will get a generic price of 124.40439. Oh, sorry, 40439. Well, we can compare these two because this is a generic price and this is a generic price. So just the difference in the two generic prices is 0.5956. Um, but we need to bring it back to here. We can do this in one of two ways. This is a, a, a generic arbitrage opportunity. So I can answer the question right now. Yes, an arbitrage opportunity exists. Uh, but if I want to answer the question, well, what is the arbitrage profit? Uh, I can't answer that with a generic uh, price. I need a specific price. Remember now, we took a specific price, can use the conversion factor to come up with a generic price to compare with the generic price. This is a generic difference. It's a generic profit. We want a specific profit. We can do one of two things. We can bring the point five nine five, sorry, five nine five six back in time, one point zero zero three to the power of point two five, and then apply the conversion factor to make it specific. Or we can take the point five nine five six, make it specific right away then discount it by 1.003 to the power of 0.25, whichever way you want to do it, we will get 0.5356. Same answer as we got the last two times. So if you can, uh, from uh, here on in, conceive of derivative questions as nothing more than a time value of money problem. As you read the question, draw your timeline put the dollar amounts at the different points in the timeline and say, okay, my job is to bring all of those dollar values at the same point in time to compare them. You can bring money forward, compare the difference, bring the difference backwards. You can bring the money that's in the future backwards and compare the difference as of today. Whenever we're dealing with bond futures, we have to keep in mind that we have specific dollars and we have generic dollars and they're at different points in time. So we have two jobs. Number one is we have to compare generic dollars with generic dollars at the same point in time, or compare specific dollars with specific dollars at the same point in time. And to determine what our profit is, our profit can only be in specific dollars. We can't make generic profits. Uh, so hopefully that uh, helps to clear up that rather challenging uh, conceptual, uh, it's like conceptually challenging problem at level two. It's not so much that it's mathematically or arithmetically challenging, it's just conceptually challenging. And I think the timeline, uh, if you can think of uh, level two in this way, will really clean up those readings in, in derivatives at level two because they are the most complained about readings uh, in all of CFA is the level two derivatives. And honestly, I've seen a lot of textbooks and a lot of treatments on derivatives. Uh, the level two treatment of derivatives is one of the worst treatments of derivatives I have ever seen. It is written in such a way that it is far more difficult than it has to be. All derivatives are nothing more than level one, reading six, time value of money. There it is. That's it.